Hi there. It's very nice to see you. As I understand it, we are doing a an annual wellness checkup today. Is that correct? Wonderful. So before we begin, would you mind if I just have you confirm your name and date of birth? Wonderful. And is that your preferred name? How do you like to be addressed? Excellent. For this annual wellness examination, we're going to be hitting a lot of different bases. I do have a short little questionnaire for you. We're also going to be taking some of your vital signs. We'll be looking at your ears, eyes, nose and throat, heart and lungs, all those major areas like that. If there is anything in particular you want to address, you want to discuss, talk about, what have you, just let me know. This is that appointment that if you have any questions about screenings, preventive measures, anything like that, this is the appointment that we want to discuss that, okay? Wonderful. So, the questionnaire, this will only take a few minutes. So, I have a number of questions about your general health, your lifestyle, few numbers, bits and bobs like that. So firstly, are there any health conditions, illnesses, things like that, that occurred in the past that you may have gotten over, cured from, things of that nature? Anything significant? I'll move that down. Very good. And any current conditions, acute or chronic? This would be things like asthma or diabetes. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay, very good. And any injuries or surgeries that you have experienced? Okay. Yeah, I'll write that down. Okay. And are you taking any prescription medication? And what is the dosage? And how many times a day do you take that? Okay, anything else? And what about over-the-counter medicine use? Allergy medicine, cough medicine, things like that. Okay, and what about vitamins or herbal supplements? Anything of that nature. Okay. And what dosage? have any allergies to medication at all? And what about food? And any environmental or other types of allergies at all? Very good. Now I'm going to ask a little bit about your lifestyle. This is important just because it gives me an idea of maybe some conditions that you might be 
more inclined to develop or certain hazards that we need to keep an eye on. So firstly, are you working? Are you a student? What is it that you do in terms of occupation? Okay, and tell me a little bit about that. Full-time, part-time, seasonal, picking up things as you can. Okay, and what does that involve? What kind of activities does that involve? Very good. All right. And now a little bit about alcohol, tobacco, drug use, and whatnot. This is important not because I'm going to snitch on you or anything. That is not even an option here. What we want to do here is if for any reason we need to administer a treatment or prescription, we want to make sure that we're not going to have any contraindications, that we're not going to have any reactions, okay? So if you could just be as honest as you can, just because this is more for medication interactions. So any alcohol use, and if so, how much would you say per week? Okay, and tobacco use, and that does include vapes as well. And what about recreational drugs like marijuana, cocaine, ecstasy, things like that, even if it's just taking shrooms on a rafting trip or something like that? Okay. Good to know. Good to know. And what about your diet? How would you consider your diet? Okay. Yeah. Great. And what does your fruit and vegetable sort of intake look like? Your grains, things of that nature. Okay. All right. And what does exercise look for you, look like for you? Rather. Mm hmm. And as far as you know, are you up to date on all of your vaccinations? Okay, very good. Very important. And last question, and again, this is more for determining if we need to administer prescriptions, what kind of dosage we would need. What is your height and weight as far as you know? Okay, very good. So, lots of questions, but we got those all done. So, my nurse did take your temperature, is that correct? Okay, she did not get the blood pressure though, right? Okay, I did have that noted down here. So, let's go ahead and do that now. Do you have any preference as to which arm I use to take your blood pressure? Okay, I can do that. And from this point onwards, I will need to be touching you for the examination. Is that okay with you? stethoscope. And I'm just
just going to put the dial into the cuff here. That way I can keep an eye on it. And stethoscope goes in the crook of your elbow here. Let me just make sure. Okay, the valve was open, so I'm going to close that. And then we're going to take your blood pressure. So the cuff will get rather tight. It does not last very long. I am quite quick at this. We'll do that just one more time. Very good. Going to take my stethoscope back. I'll take the dial out. I'll be needing this for a little bit. And we'll put the sphygmomanometer away. wouldn't mind, I'd like to take your pulse. Okay, I'm going to do that on the opposite side. So if you could just hold out your wrist for me. Good. I'm just going to put my fingers right in the radial artery area here, right under the thumb. Good. We'll just wait here for a few moments. Good. Good pulse. Nice strength. Pretty good quality there. Okay. Alright. So we have pulse and respirations. Now, let's take a little peek at your ears. So, I'd just like to have a quick peek at the outside of the ears and make sure that there aren't any contraindications and that the tissues look clear. If you had any issues with pain in the ears, tenderness, feeling of fullness, hearing issues, anything like that. Okay, let's go ahead and look inside the ears.
issue with. That's good to note down. Okay, good to know. And I trust that you don't put any cotton buds in by the ear either. Okay, very good. That's very important. We don't want to push anything further in the ear and cause an impaction. That can cause temporary or sometimes permanent hearing loss. It's not very fun. Okay, just take a peek. I'm just going to adjust a little bit. And we'll take that out, and then we'll switch to this side. I'm going to pull up the back on the ear here. And then we can, then we can put the otoscope in the ear canal. There we go. Uh, so, like the other side. And we can pull out the otoscope and get rid of that speculum. So now I'd like to have a little peek at the nose, the mouth, and the throat. So we're going to bring the otoscope back just for some light here. And this is not going to go inside the nose. Just want to have a little look here. So the nasal passages are clear and the septum looks to be midline. And I'm not seeing any perforation. Do you have any issues with having reoccurrent runny nose? Do you snore? Any breathing issues? Sinus issues? No, none of the above. Okay, very good. I'm going to switch to a different light. And we're going to look inside of the mouth. So if I could just have you open your mouth for me. Good. We'll just take a little peek. I want to look at the health of the teeth, the tongue, the oral cavity as a whole, the mucosa, the palates, and I'd like to look at the throat here. So if you could just stick out your tongue as far as it'll go, we'll flatten that as best as we can. Just going to take a look. Looking for signs of cobblestoning, swelling, irritation. Good. Okay. And if 
if you could just say ah for me. Okay, you really looks good and it is midline. I'm going to take this out. And you can close the mouth. I'm going to take a little look at the lymph nodes from the back of the head to above the clavicles. Have you had any issues with swelling in any of the lymph nodes as far as you know? Okay, very good. So I'm going to do a little palpation here. I'm going to start at the back of the head. And these are the occipital nodes at the occiput, right around the hairline, just about. Good, and then we have the postauricular nodes. These are behind the ear, right back in here. While the preauricular nodes are in front of the ear. And submental and submandibular are under the jaw here. Good. Okay. And our anterior cervical, deep cervical, post cervical nodes are going to be right in the neck here. Okay, and then we have supraclavicular above the clavicle here. Good. Okay, so those all look clear. Let's take a peek at the eyes. So we want to make sure that our pupils are equal, round, and reactive to light. If I could just have you look right here. And I'm going to bring this in a couple of times. Just make sure that they constrict and dilate as they should. Good. Just keep looking at my nose. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. So I have a few different eye tests. Firstly, I'm going to have you keep looking at my nose. And I'm just going to swing the light back and forth. This is called the swinging light test for that reason. Just looking for a type of defect in the eyes here. Afferent defect. Good. And now I'd like to do the direct consensual response test. I'm going to hold my hand between your eyes here. And I'm just going to have you look straight ahead. I'm going to bring the light in on one side. That's the direct response. Direct. Direct. Good. And the consensual response. Consensual. Consensual. Good. And we'll just check the other side. 
direct, 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 good, consensual, 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 good. And now I would like you to look at the flowers back here. Now just take a moment to look at the flowers. Good. And then if you could just look at my finger here. And using only your eyes without moving your head, I'd like you to follow this. It comes in and out. In and out in and out. Good. And if you could look at the door here. This door. Good. And then if you could look at my finger here. We're gonna bring this in. And out, in, and out, in, and out. Good. Look at this finger. Okay, we'll go up, down, up. No lid lag there. Now let's take a little look at the heart and lungs. So before I bring out the stethoscope, I am going to do a little percussion on the chest. So I am going to be just tapping along different parts of the chest to just ascertain if there is air in an area, is there fluid in an area where there should be or where there should not be. Okay? Always comparing one side to the other. Good. 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 And if I could have you turn around for just a moment so that I can do the back as well. Okay. So while you are turned around, I am going to listen to your back. Good. So when I put the diaphragm of the stethoscope on your chest, I'm going to have you take a deep breath in and out. I'll let you know when I need you to do that, okay? If you could take Deep breath in and out. 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 Deep 
deep breath in and out. Deep breath in and out. Deep breath in and out. Last one. Deep breath in and out. Good. Now you can go ahead and turn back around. We'll finish auscultating the lungs and then move on to the heart. Okay. Deep breath in. And out. Deep breath in. And out. Deep breath in and out. Deep breath in and out. Deep breath in. a listen to the heart now. You don't have to breathe any differently. Just breathe normally. And we'll listen to the aortic area first. The pulmonary. The tricuspid, and the mitral ear. Good. Now I'm just going to switch this to the bell of the stethoscope, and I'm going to listen to those same areas. and tricuspid okay pulmonary good and aortic good okay so I am going to move to the abdomen we'll do some auscultation there then we'll do a bit of palpation and percussion. So I am going to just have you breathe normally. And I'm going to just listen all around the abdomen. We have four quadrants, nine sections in the abdomen here. I had asked before, but had you had any trouble with shortness of breath, trouble breathing, or racing heart? Maybe your heart feels a little too slow. Okay, so any other issues with the heart or lungs that you can think of? And anything with the GI system or the actual abdomen itself, pain, things like that. (laughs) 
All right, let's put this bad boy away for a bit. These certainly were not made for comfort with the ears. Now I'm going to be doing some percussion here. So just like I had done before on the chest, where I am striking my hand with my fingers, I'm going to be doing that on the abdomen, okay? This way I can kind of get a sense of the contours, the borders of the organs. As well as if there is air or fluid in an area where there should be. And now we'll do some palpation. We're going to do both a firm and a deep palpation. So the firm is only going to use one hand. The deep is going to use two. Okay? We'll start with the firm. This one's not generally anyone's favorite. But it is easier than the deep palpation. And the key when someone is pressing into the abdomen is to keep breathing through it and focus on breathing through it. So it can be a little difficult to remember to breathe when someone is pressing in around your diaphragm and where the abdomen expands during breath. Okay, and now I'm going to do the deep palpation. Please let me know if it's painful or tender. This is where I really put the weight into it. Okay, very good. And was there any pain or tenderness with the firm palpation at all? No, okay. bit of musculoskeletal testing. I'm going to ask you to do some range of movement exercises here. So firstly, if you could turn your head to one side and the other. Good. Can you go up as far as you can and down as far as you can? And can you tilt your head to one side and the other? Very good. Any pain or restriction with any of this? Okay. Can you shrug the shoulders? Just give them a few shrugs. Very good. Can you roll the shoulders back? And how about forward? Can you bend at the elbows here? Good. Can you roll the wrists forward and back? Might get a lot of snapping and popping. Okay. Can you splay the fingers? Can you close them into a fist? Good. Can you make a tabletop with them? Good, and just curl the first knuckles, first joints, okay, and the whole of the fingers, can you curl those down? Okay, 
very good. And I'm just going to squeeze the sides of the hands. Let me know if that's painful. Any pain here? No? Okay, very good. Now I'm going to have you hold your arms like this so that the upper arm is parallel to the floor, forearm is perpendicular, and I'm going to try to pull you towards me. I'd like you to resist me. Good. And I'm going to try to push you. I'd like you to resist me. Very good. Okay. And with the legs here, if you could bend them at the knee. Okay, you have just a few bends there. Good. Can you roll the ankles back and forth? Good. Display the toes. Curl them. Can you tip the feet up and down? How about inside and outside? Good. And can you move your hips out to the side so you're moving your leg outwards like this? Good. And can you lift up the legs? Okay. I am going to try to push your shins forward. I'd like you to resist me. Good. And I'm going to try to pull your calves towards me. I'd like you to resist me. Okay. Very good. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to bring out the reflex hammer. This is a Taylor hammer right here. This is the first designated reflex hammer. And I am going to test the Babinski reflex on the sole of the foot with the blade of this reflex hammer. So if you could just let your feet go limp here. Just going to stroke the sole with the blade. Good, and we get that curling there. Okay, and now I'm going to do our ankle jerk reflex. So I'm just going to good. Now we can do the knees. If you'll just let the knees relax, the legs relax. Good. Very good. And we'll do biceps and triceps. So triceps, I'm going to come around the back of the arm here. Just let the arm relax. Just lay it across your thigh here and let it relax. Good. And for biceps, I'm going to be putting my finger in the crook of your elbow and cupping the rest of my hand around the elbow here. I'm going to be tapping on my thumb. Good. And the other side, allow the arm to relax along the thigh. We'll get the triceps back here. Good. And biceps. Okay. Very good. So we have just a couple of tests left over. 
and both of them are going to require you to get up for me. Firstly, we're going to do a spinal examination. So I'll have you turn around and I'll have you bend forward as far as you can as if you were going to touch your toes, okay? All right, so I'll give you just a moment to rearrange there. And I'm going to be feeling the spine. I'm also going to have you very slowly return to standing. Okay, so I'm just going to palpate along here. Make sure there isn't any outward scoliosis, for example. Is any of this painful or tender at all? Okay, and have you had any issues with back pain lately? Okay, now I'm going to have you very slowly, vertebra by vertebra, straighten the spine until you are back to standing. Okay, very slowly and you'll still feel my hands on your back. Now oh, this is kind of difficult to do that. Very controlled movement. Okay, excellent. So our very last test is going to be a balance and gait sort of test. I'm going to have you walk to the end of the room just normally, okay? Good. And if you could come back walking on your toes. For some people, it is pretty easy. I'm included there. For some people, it's rather difficult. Okay, and if you can walk back on your heels, walk to the end of the room on your heels. Good, and if you could return walking heel to toe. Heel to toe. That one trips people up sometimes. Good. Okay, excellent. Balance looks good. Coordination, gait, looks pretty good. Did you have any questions at all? Did you want to discuss any sort of health measures? Any questions regarding your health? Anything like that? No? All set? Okay. If you do have any questions, more than welcome to call the office and we'll return that call, have a little chit chat, right? Okay. Well, I am going to sign off on your chart, and you are all good for another year. Good. And that'll be it. I'd like to thank you so much for coming into the office for this annual wellness checkup and taking control of your health. I hope you have a whale of a day and a good rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, it would greatly help me out if you clicked the like button and left a comment so YouTube's algorithm 
registers that it was a good video. If you want to see more of my work, consider subscribing to the channel. I create primarily medical pseudoscience slash alternative medicine and personal attention ASMR role plays. But I've done a little bit of everything from historical to sci-fi to fantasy. If you'd like to support the channel, I offer ad-free videos, early access on videos, and exclusive content on Patreon. Or I also have a Ko-Fi link for a one-time donation, or a throne wish list for props and equipment. Thank you again, and I hope you have a whale of a day.